Georgia State football is a winner here in their homecoming football game at the Georgia Dome, beating Tennessee Martin 31-6. You're watching this week's Georgia State Sports Update. Dave Cohen and Brandon Leak here from the Georgia Dome. It's been a victorious day for the Panthers. They win their homecoming football game 31-6 over the Skyhawks of the University of Tennessee at Martin. I was worried about this football game coming in just because of the number of injuries to the offensive unit. Uh, the defense rose to the occasion today, and even a couple of guys like Robert Davis and Glenn Smith ended up playing. I didn't think they would as of Thursday of last week, and Aaron Winchester Subbing for Connor Manning plays a pretty good football game at quarterback, Brandon. Yeah, we took the next man up term to maybe the next two men up with all of the injuries, and a lot of the guys who were out playing were still banged up, not at 100% capacity. So a good win, good balance. The offense put up points. The defense put up points. We were able to control the game with the ground game, and I think that was the biggest thing for the, the the Panthers that got things turned in their favor. They were able to run the ball, run it a lot. 39 carries for 166 yards. That was a very good spot on the stat sheet for the Panthers today. Second best game running the football so far this season. You have to go back, obviously, to the Texas State game uh, and 196 yards rushing uh, to find the best day rushing for Georgia State football. But, you know, one stat that Brandon brought out on the uh, radio show uh, today was the fact that uh, four games this year, the defense has held the opponent without a touchdown in the first half and did it again today. Yeah, good to see them rewarded. And, you know, the fact that they have been so consistent all season long on the road, at home, at Wisconsin, at home, at Troy, at home, you know, you name it, they've done a very good job of uh, playing some really good offenses and really finding a way to stay in the game. So today it was really good to see them rewarded for their hard work. They were able to shut down the run game pretty much early in the ball game. And the biggest thing, coming away with not only takeaways, but coming away with points off of those turnovers, a fumble, a fumble recovery for a touchdown and a pick six. You get 14 points for your defense, you're probably going to be in a pretty good play. All right, Georgia State on the road in Mobile, Alabama. Next Saturday, they're going to take on the Jaguars of South Alabama. As we continue on here in the Georgia State Sports Update from the Georgia Dome, if you've ever been to a football game here, whether it's been Georgia State or even an Atlanta Falcons game, no doubt you have looked up to your left or to your right to the Jumbotron. And our Caitlin Whitey goes behind the scenes on what goes on to get all of that up and running on the Jumbotron here at the Georgia Dome. When you come to a GSU game, you see football, you see the cheerleaders, you see the band, you see all the fans. Well, do you ever wonder what it takes to pull all that together and put it up on the big screen? I control the camera. The camera operator, in his mind or her mind, sees what they would think to see from their living room couch, and they create that image. They frame a camera, they focus a camera to please themselves sitting on their couch. I take that information through these controls one for each camera, and I create the image that you see, the color, brightness, dark, enhancement as we just uh, looked at. So all the cameras match as closely as possible. I do replays and we feed the big jumbotron board, so what I do is I take three cameras in and I have a choice of either one of those cameras when I go to make a replay. I look to see what's the best angle, how we can tell the story, what the director might be looking for. And we do it all through this box. This is known as EVS. Three on blue. All right, this is the media, all three. Okay, Mark, you got to go to the Lily section. Are you ready? Send by X. I am basically telling everybody in the room what to do. Nothing on the screen changes until I make the decision for it. So when we hit the break, we'll do the X first while we're setting them up. I played a part of making sure all the content is created. I give them the April who then loads them and that's how that goes. So I'm pretty much the go-to person when it comes to whatever content that needs to go to that board.
Thanks, Caitlin. We're joined in studio right now by Georgia State's head football coach Trent Miles. Again, 31-6, the final score this past Saturday at the Georgia Dome. A win over Tennessee Martin in the annual homecoming game. Coach, great to have you here. Great football game on Saturday. You know, I was worried about that football game. Especially, Trap game. Exactly. You called it. Especially after talking with you on radio and here on the TV show. Uh, but everybody came out and played a great game. Yes, we were very excited uh, the way it ended up. It was a little nerve-wracking going in. We lost Connor Manning on Thursday morning. Uh, we thought that uh, he might be okay, and they tried him again Saturday in pregame warm-ups, and he just couldn't go. So Aaron got to start, and uh, I thought he performed well, uh, especially for the situation of not being prepared as the starter the, the whole week. Uh, defensively, I thought we were outstanding. Uh, two defensive scores. Uh, just I, I don't have enough words to say about those guys are playing extremely hard, and and uh, they're lining up and executing. Offensively, we, we had some spurts. Uh, we're getting better. Uh, we've got to stop the self-inflicted wounds, the, the penalties, the, the illegal procedures, and things that, that put us behind the eight ball. You know, all of a sudden you go from first and 10 to first and 15, or second and eight to second and 13, and uh, we've got to cut that out to have a chance here uh, in this run for the Sun Belt. You know, what was nice about this football game was that uh, you got off to the 7 nothing uh, start with the 7 uh, nothing lead with the, with the touchdown pass to Glenn Smith, then went up 10 to nothing, and it, it finally got to a point where not that the football team would relax, but the football team knew that it was playing well enough that unless it somehow self-imploded, which thankfully it didn't do and there were no mistakes, that uh, it was only going to get better as uh, we got into the second half and then into the fourth quarter. Yeah, we felt that after watching the film, uh, they're a good football team. You know, yep. they go out to Hawaii and had Hawaii beat uh, and got beat late, but uh, they had every opportunity to win that game. They played Cincinnati extremely well at Cincinnati, and Cincinnati pulled away late in the fourth quarter. Uh, they, they're a good football team, well coached, but we felt that uh, if we didn't uh, self implode, that we'd be okay. And uh, our kids, they just kept at it. We ran the ball for almost 200 yards, and and uh, they, we stayed on the ground. We had Darius Stubbs break a 35-yard touchdown run. We got scores offense and defense, and uh, I thought our kids performed well. Well, you know, anytime you can get scores from your defensive unit, that's a bonus. B.J. Clay had a pick six, two in, one of his two interceptions. Trey Payne, who's doing just about everything right now, multiple roles, including long snapping, he had an interception. And, uh, and then Martirius Allen, who's one of your backup tackles, Right place at the right time, foot, uh, fumbled football uh, by the quarterback, Troy Cook. And it looked like he dragged four or five guys with him on his back into the end zone. Well, we consider Martarius a starter as much as he's playing now and, and alternating in. And we've actually moved him down to the nose guard position. And he's a very difficult person to stop. Uh, very strong and very quick and very talented young man that's only going to get better. So uh, I was glad to see those guys play well. Uh, we're going to need to continue to do that, and we're going to have to pick it up on the offensive side. Well, you know, we, we talk about depth all the time, and, you know, there's better depth at certain positions than there are at other positions. I really wasn't worried, as I'm sure you probably weren't either. When Jerome Smith was injured, B.J. Clay step, uh, steps in. B.J.'s been here now a number of years, and he came up with two big plays. Well, we never like to see Jerome go down because Jerome's one of the best cover corners in, in the conference, and uh, he will be back with us, hopefully, by the Arkansas State game. He's so tough, he actually had a plate put in his hand uh, that he had the same hand break last year, mm -hmm. and they put a plate in, and then he redid it this year, so they had to put another plate in. So uh, it should be a two-week process, and then he'll play with the club. But behind him, Sed Stone and, and B.J. Clay are, are doing a really good job. They could play and start for a lot of football teams. Uh, so with our, our mantra is next man in. So... Uh, they proved that. They picked up the flag, B.J. and said, and, and did an excellent job. Michael Shaw had a big day. Leader uh, led the team in tackles, eight total tackles, seven of those unassisted. He's a very good football player. Uh, he plays uh, with a lot of uh, aggressiveness. Uh, he's got length. Uh, he does a great job against the run, and he's able to drop in into uh, pass coverage. And, and when we ask him to rush, you know, he was our rush in last year, so he knows how to get after the quarterback. So he's a really good football player. You know, you never want to see any injuries uh, with regards to the quarterback spot. Connor Manning injured slightly during the week, but not good enough to go. So Aaron doesn't find out till Saturday morning officially that he's going to start that football game. Even going back to spring and everything that he learned last year, he had a pretty good spring game. 
uh, heading into uh, you know prior to fall practice. I mean, I think everybody, you included, obviously at the top, had the utmost confidence that you know, he knows the system and can step right in and make plays. And he gives you a little bit of a different look because he can run as well as throw the ball. He has a different dimension for us. Yeah. He can run the ball. Uh, the only thing that makes you nervous is the fact that he hasn't played much. You right. know, it's one thing to play good in a spring game, <laughs> but it's another thing to go out there and play in a real game. And he proved that he can do that. He'll only get better as we go. Uh, we have to see where Connor's at. Uh, I know Connor's getting an MRI to determine the extent of the injury, and uh, we'll know more well, when Bob Murphy informs us, uh, you know, tomorrow. So uh, it's it's get Aaron ready, get him prepared. Jaquez Parks is your backup quarterback, and and uh, let's go. So it changes our game plan a little bit, but we have the utmost confidence in both of those guys. Exciting for Darius Stubbs, 35 yards on a touchdown run. He gets his first collegiate touchdown, but more importantly, he gets it in a win. Yes, and, and he's running better and better as he, you know, it's just when freshmen get to play, they get better as they go, and uh, they're just getting more comfortable, more relaxed out there, and, and uh, he's a hard physical runner with speed, so uh, the more we can get him the ball, the better. Good thing, too, he is a freshman. So yes, you know, he is. <laughs> I know sometimes you say freshmen turn into sophomores. The way he's running the football, it's nice he's to know he's already turned into a sophomore. Yeah, but, he's but, played enough, now he's a sophomore. But it's nice to know he's going to be here for a few years. Yes, it is. All right, so Georgia State a winner in the annual homecoming game. They beat the uh, Skyhawks of the University of Tennessee at Martin 31-6. to And right now we'll take a look at some of the highlights from the Georgia State win this past Saturday in the Georgia Dome. Right in, McElrath, here's the snap. And it's going to be a dump across the middle, intercepted by Georgia State. Picked off. And the Panthers, Trey Payne going to come up with the pick. Winchester, the shotgun snap. Aaron out of the pocket, and Aaron avoided the sack, and now he's going to tuck it and run. He's close to a first down. He's got the first down across midfield. Second and goal, seven-yard line. And there's a throw across the middle. It's caught. Touchdown, Georgia State. Shotgun snap on the way to Winchester. Aaron looking, got a man downfield. It's Glenn Smith. It's up there, and it's caught, and he held on to the football. Far hash mark, here's the snap, they'll give it to Bo, Bo going to try to run, he broke one tackle running here to the near side, he's going to get dragged down from behind, no he stays on his feet, quarter, here's the snap to Cook, and they're going to hand it off, a running play to Grayson, nothing going, first and 15 right now, they're going to give it to, oh it's a fake and a handoff, a keeper by Winchester, Winchester 40, 45, and he runs out of bounds, but again, another transfer. Here's the snap, and he'll hand it off again to Najee Ray. Oh. Lost the football! Loose, it's going to be picked up by Georgia State. I believe it's Martarius Allen, and he's dragging a couple of defenders into the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia State! Del Lee, back at the inside the five, up across the ten. He escaped one, but he ain't getting away from 39. Chase Middleton, who's had an outstanding day today in a number of different areas of the field. <laughs> Over here to the near side, Kalen Weathers, and here's the throw towards the end zone. Could be another interception, and it is in the end zone. Another interception in the end zone. Far hash mark. They're going to hand it off to Stubbs. Big hole up the middle. Broke one tackle. Broke a second at the 20, at the 15, at the 5. Touchdown! 35-yard run. After bouncing off a couple of defenders, Darius Stubbs got to the outside. And scampered into the end zone for his first collegiate touchdown. Again, 31-6, the final score. Georgia State's second win of the season, a win over UT Martin. A couple of points I forgot to bring up in the previous segment, Coach. Six points allowed, the fewest allowed in the game in Georgia State football history. First time Georgia State's had two defensive touchdowns in Georgia State football history. First time we held them without a touchdown. Right. So that, that's, it was a great day for the defense. We we're going to need them to continue playing as effective as they are. Uh, until we can get our offense up to speed and we're, we're continuing to get better. Uh, I think we're getting better at running the football. Now we've got to get all the other things and anytime in midstream you have a quarterback change, you know, it has to change some of your play calling and so it changes the way you prepare. We've got to get everybody used to Aaron being the quarterback. It's a, when it's a different person out there. So guys are going to have to stay on their blocks a little longer because he'll pull it and take off and run and uh, guys have to do a good job of blocking downfield and we've got to do a good job as coaches of putting them in the right positions. All right, so Georgia State's back in the road this week. Going to head down to Mobile, Alabama, 
conference game, the uh, Jaguars from the University of South Alabama. They're kind of an enigma, if that's the right word, because they've got two very nice wins. They beat an SEC team in Mississippi State on the road, and then they beat San Diego State, which I believe at the time was ranked 19th in the country, yet they're 0-4 in Sunbelt play. That just goes to show you the depth <laughs> of the Sunbelt. Right. right. Anybody in the Sunbelt can beat anybody on, on any given day. Yep. And you've got to show up and play your with your A game and play your best. You've got to take care of the football and not give up big plays on defense to have a chance to win. doesn't matter who it is. New Mexico State, Idaho, South Alabama, Georgia State, Appalachian State, Trade. doesn't matter who it is. If you don't do the things you need to do, you will get embarrassed. And, and our sun, the Sun Belt is a, from top to bottom, there's really not much difference than of any team. Well, you look at some of their personnel. Dallas Davis, their starting quarterback, about a 58% completion rate, six touchdowns, six interceptions. Uh, they got a pretty good receiver in uh, Gerald Everett, four touchdowns off of 34 catches. He's better than pretty good. <laughs> well, ho hopefully not He's, too good. He'll on be Saturday. a high round draft choice in the NFL. Yeah. And with regards to running, their running game, Xavier Johnson, who seems like he's been there since we joined the Sun Belt, uh, he's got five rushing touchdowns. Tyrese Thomas has three. So They're a good football team. They're well coached. Uh, Joey does a great job there. And I think they've been playing football about a year longer than we have. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they, you go through pains, but uh, uh, they're figuring it out. They, they play good, solid defense. And offensively, they try not to beat themselves. So, you know, we'll have our work cut out for us. They play well at home. And we're going to have to go in there and play our best ball. And, and uh, li uh, like last time, not like last time, give the ch officials a chance to make a bad call and, and go in there and, and take care of the football and win. Well, we've talked a lot about the Georgia State defense, but it is nice to know, Coach, that whether you're at Wisconsin or whether you're at Troy or whether you're in the Dome against UT Martin and hopefully against South Alabama, the defense is going to give Georgia State an opportunity in every single game. As long as we show up and play our game and play the way we're capable of playing, they'll give us an opportunity a chance to win in every game we're in. All right, last week on the radio, I think the first half of your pregame radio show, we were just running down injuries. Uh, anybody coming back, the injury situation a little bit better? Because honestly, going into the UT Martin game, I did not expect to see Glenn Smith and I didn't expect to see uh, Robert Davis. Both played, Robert, I don't sparingly. think. Sparingly. Sparingly, Robert didn't yeah. catch any balls, but Glenn Smith caught three, including one touchdown. Yeah, and he was, you know, he's <laughs> very sore. I was, you know, he, he was, uh, unable to really do much in the second half. Uh, so we should get them back a little bit more healthy this week. We've put them in red with no contact, so hopefully they'll be, they'll be back going. Uh, we should get Keith Rucker back for this game. Uh, we're pretty excited about uh, uh, Aaron's development and, and uh, how he's going because Connor's probably uh, not going to be able to play this game either. So uh, we're, it's just a wait and see. You know, you lose Glenn. Uh, I think we'll be getting Jamil Spencer back here shortly. I don't know if it'll be this game or the next game. And we might be able to get to Bill Technic back. So if we can start getting some of these guys back, and we'll be a lot better off. All right, some good news on the injury front there for Coach Miles and Georgia State football. Time now to take some questions for head coach Trent Miles. Hello, I'm Marcos Galarza. I'm a finance and computer information systems major at Georgia State University. And I have to ask you, Coach, when are you going to put me in? If you'd like to come out for our football team, please contact Liam Smith in our football office at 188 MLK Street Southeast. Uh, his number is 413-4110. So please give him a contact, and, and uh, he'll talk to you about the steps you have to take to come out for our football team. Hi, my name is Perry Smith. I'm out of Georgia State, and I'm an uh, undeclared freshman. And Coach Miles, I have a question. Is it hard can controlling all the egos on the team? Well, we, the biggest sign in our building when you walk into the locker room, it says team before self. So we have a rule that we want everyone, as they come in the door, there's a, there's a, like a trash can right there as you walk in the front door to drop your ego off at the door when you come into the building. And then you can pick it back up when you leave the building. But they also have to remember that anytime they're out there in public, they're representing Georgia State football and not themselves. So we always have the set of mind of putting the team before, before self. Hi, I'm Jesse Glaze. I'm an accounting major. Coach, if you had a pet panther, what would you name him? I would not have a pet panther because I do not like cats. I'm allergic to cats. I'm a dog man. Uh, but if we had one, um, 
Ooh, I don't know. I'd have to ask my children and allow them to, to name it. But uh, uh, our, our dog's name is Ari, uh, not to be confused with Ari Wurtz. Uh, it's spelled differently. It's Latin for golden, and we have a golden retriever, so that's why we, we named her Ari. And uh, I really couldn't give you a name for a, a panther because uh, um, maybe we just call it state. <laughs> All right, Coach, good questions this week. Let's get automobile and uh, bring a win back. Let's go. All right, we'll see Coach in here next week uh, here on the Georgia State Sports Update. As we continue on in this week's show, we're going to talk to Mary Beth Walker. She's the dean of the Andrew Young School of Policy Studies. I am a public finance economist and global development specialist at Development Alternatives, Inc. I am a senior UPS development fellow at Operation Hope. I'm the executive director at the Atlanta Bicycle Coalition. I am an intern with the World Affairs Council of Atlanta. Clinical instructor at the Department of Criminal Justice. I am with the World Bank, currently working as a senior economist in the South Asia Sustainable Development Department. Located in the heart of downtown Atlanta. We are the Andrew Young School of Policy Studies. Where cutting edge theory meets a world of opportunity. We're ranked among the top 25 graduate programs in public affairs and administration. And because we believe the best education comes with practical experience, our students completed more than 8,000 internship hours. At federal agencies, national nonprofits, local governments, and community groups. So what do you want to do? Transform cities. Draft economic policy. Advocate for the disadvantaged. Fight for justice. You just might change the world. With a degree from the Andrew Young School of Policy Studies. We teach great minds to do great things. Andrew Young School of Policy Studies. We're changing the world. One student at a time. One idea at a time. We are the Andrew Young School of Policy Studies. At Georgia State University. My choice for me was to attend the Andrew Young School of Policy Studies because it is recognized as one of the top schools in public finance and budgeting worldwide. The real life application skills that I got here at the Andrew Young School were invaluable. We got to work with nonprofits and other organizations and actually I had uh, several great research internships. The faculty at the Andrew Young School have a passion for teaching and mentoring. I was working full time so the evening classes made it possible for me to get a graduate degree. One of the main things that the Andrew Young School of Policy Studies does is try to prepare our leaders for tomorrow to solve world problems uh, and the school gave me just that. I am the Andrew Young School of Policy Studies. I am the Andrew Young School of Policy Studies. I am the Andrew Young School of Policy Studies. We are the Andrew Young School of Policy Studies at Georgia State University. Joined in studio right now by our special guest, Mary Beth Walker. She's the dean of the Andrew Young School of Policy Studies. And Dean Walker, great to have you here in our lovely studio. And exciting times at Georgia State, especially for the Andrew Young School of Policy Studies. First and foremost, turning 20 years old here in 2016. Well, thank you for having me, Dave. And yes, this, is, this year is our 20th anniversary year. Well, like me, you've been around for a long time at Georgia State. You were there at the inception of the Andrew Young School. Just talk about, you know, going back to those early days 20 years ago and how far the, the school has come here on campus. Well, it, it is amazing. A lot of changes over the 20 years. I was an assistant professor in 1996 and when the Andrew Young School was formed. We started out, I think, that first year with about 40 students who graduated. Uh, this past spring, we graduated over 600 students in the Andrew Young School. We've added to the academic units that we have in the school. We've added to our research centers. We've hired some outstanding faculty, and we got some outstanding faculty when criminal justice and social work came into the school. So it has been uh, an amazing experience so far. Talk a little bit about Andrew Young himself uh, in, in Atlanta and in, you know, national civil rights icon. His name is on the building. I understand he's not in there, you know, every day or every week, but it does kind of follow along with the principles that, that he has followed throughout his life and his career. 
I think that that's exactly right. Ambassador Young has been engaged with us since the beginning. He uh, is a real advocate for good public policy. He really understands the importance of, you know, social justice and engagement in the community. He's been one of our strongest spokesmen and uh, advocates for the school. And, you know, with his name on the building and the outstanding faculty and students, it's not a surprise. The AYSPS currently ranks, ten, uh, ranks in the top 10 percent of universities that offer public affairs. Uh, that's right. We're very proud of that. Our uh, school, there's probably about 270 in the U.S. schools of public policy, public affairs, and we're in that top 10 percent of those and ranked alongside of some very, very strong programs. So we have a, a high quality uh, master's of public administration program. We're very proud of the faculty. Well, and lastly, I know one of the programs, new programs uh, or new degree offerings that you're excited about is uh, the one offering or dealing with social entrepreneurship. I am very excited about this. We are just introducing this Bachelor of Interdisciplinary Studies, a track in social entrepreneurship. These are for our really committed and passionate students who are very involved and interested in a particular issue. Maybe it's about the environment or maybe it's about, you know, a children's issue. And they want to be, wait, they want to be part of a nonprofit or start a nonprofit that deals with the issue. They need to know how to be managers. They need to know how to run an enterprise that will be sustainable over time. Um, a good example that I like to point to, <coughs> the most successful social enterprise I know is the Atlanta Community Food Bank, which is so professionally run. And that's, if our students can aspire to creating an enterprise like that, being that kind of entrepreneur, we'll all be better off. Well, I know at the end of the day, it's all about making an impact. It's about educating and graduating, but it's about making an impact, and the Andrew Young School does that. That's right. I feel like we really do. Well, it's been great having you here in studio with us, and uh, thank you for everything you do and for the impact that uh, the Andrew Young School has not only on Atlanta, but the United States and uh, all the... And beyond. Uh, yeah, and beyond, <laughs> all those countries internationally. That's right. Thank you very much for having me. All right, again, I want to thank Mary Beth Walker. She's the dean of the Andrew Young School of Policy Studies for joining us here in the studio. Time now for On the Schedule. Here's what's coming up this week in Georgia State Athletics. A couple of events on Friday, Sunday, October the 28th, 29th and 30th, all day women's tennis in the GSU Invitational. That'll be here in Atlanta, also on the 28th at 6 p.m. Volleyball hosting the Trojans of Arkansas Little Rock at the GSU Sports Arena. Four events on Saturday, October the 29th, 11 a.m. cross country, participating in the Sunbelt Conference Championships in Dothan, Alabama. Georgia State football will be with them. They'll be uh, facing South Alabama down at Ladd Peebles Stadium in Mobile, Alabama. That's a 5 o'clock kickoff, 4.30 airtime on the radio if you're with us on Saturday. Also on Saturday, October the 29th at 6 p.m., volleyball hosting Arkansas State at the Georgia State Sports Arena. And lastly, at 7 o'clock on Saturday the 29th, men's soccer hosting Hartwick out at the GSU Soccer Complex. That'll do it for this week's show. I want to thank all of our guests, including Mary Beth Walker, Dean from the Andrew Young School of Policy Studies, as well as head football coach Trent Miles. For the entire crew, I'm Dave Cohen. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week here on the Georgia State Sports Update. Mm -hmm.